Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, we're going over beginner tips for RetroArch on Steam. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, just to level set here, RetroArch in itself is not a game. RetroArch is a program that contains a bunch of different emulators. Those emulators you can use to play your games or ROMs. You do have to provide your games, RetroArch doesn't have any included. You provide the game, RetroArch provides a way to play them. On top of that, performance of RetroArch will vary based on system to system. Some systems will emulate games better than others. It seems to be hit and miss, but if you have a recent up-to-date system, you should be okay. Now, RetroArch on Steam is a little bit different than the standalone version of it. With the standalone version, you have a bunch of different systems you can emulate. On Steam, you're limited to just 10, and they're all listed as DLC. So if we take a look at the systems here, Mupin 64 plus Next, that's Nintendo 64. Kronos, that's Sega Saturn. PCSX Rearmed, that's PlayStation 1. Stella is Atari 2600. Same Boy is Game Boy and Game Boy Color. MGBA is Game Boy Advanced. Uh, Mezen here is NES. Mezen S is SNES. Genesis Plus GX, that's Sega Genesis, and Final Burn Neo is your arcade emulator. Now on a quick side note here, if you're familiar with RetroArch, you can add in your own cores manually to emulate even more systems, but that's not necessarily a beginner technique and I'll address that in another video. So the first step here is to add RetroArch to your Steam library, including all of the DLC. Once you've finished installing RetroArch, just double check that the DLC cores have installed as well. To do this, click on RetroArch in your library. Then go to the right hand page where it says manage my DLC and click on it. On my computer here, you can see none of the DLC actually installed. So I'm just gonna click on every single one here just to install it to make sure I have these systems available. And when everything's installed on my computer, RetroArch is taking up 570.34 megabytes. And this does not include any of my own ROMs. Next up here, go on ahead and boot up RetroArch and your screen should look something like this. Now you might not have what I have here in the bottom left hand corner, but we are gonna fix that really quickly. The first thing to do here is select import content. This is where you specify where your games are located so RetroArch can search for them and add them. You have three different options here. You can scan an entire directory, scan for a specific file, or manually scan what you're looking for. I personally recommend clicking scan directory and from here selecting exactly where your ROMs are located. I do recommend putting all of your ROMs in one folder or one folder per system. It depends on how you want to do things. And just a friendly tip here, if you're trying to find your desktop or your downloads folder or something like that, you will have to click the C drive, scroll down to where it says users, click on that and then click on the username for your PC. And from here you can click on desktop or downloads or documents or wherever you store your games. When you've found where you want to scan, just click scan this directory. And depending on the size of the directory, this might take a bit of time. If you have a ton of ROMs, this will take a while. You might want to maybe take a break, have a tea or a coffee or maybe a cold one and wait a while. When your directory finishes scanning, you should see some systems populate on the left-hand side of the menu at the bottom. This means that RetroArch successfully found your ROMs, which is a really good thing. If not, just double check where you searched and also double check your ROMs. The next step here is to verify that your controller is working okay. So what you wanna do is go to the settings menu here, go down to where it says input and click on it and then go down into port one controls. On the device index here, double check to make sure the right controller is showing up. For me, I have an 8-Bit Doe Pro 2 and I can see it here. Now, if you have multiple controllers plugged into your computer, all you have to do is hit enter and then specify the controller that you wanna use as player one. The other controller I have hooked up is an Xbox 360 wireless, but for this video, I wanna keep it at 8-Bit Doe Pro 2. From here, double check to make sure all of your controls are working correctly. To map a control, just highlight the control that you want to map, hit enter, and then hit the corresponding button on your controller. When you're all done setting up your controller, hit backspace here. If you have player two controls, just go down to port two and set that up. Otherwise, go up here to where it says hotkeys, hit enter, and then you can set up specific hotkeys if you want. For example, load states and save states. And just a friendly tip here, if you accidentally map something wrong, just hit enter and remap it or press delete and that'll clear the mapping altogether. On a side note here, if you're having trouble setting up your controller and it's just not working correctly, you can go to the driver's menu on your settings, go down to controller and change it from maybe X input to D input and that might help. Since we're on the settings menu, there's one last thing I'm going to address here before we launch a game. 
and that is the achievements. So RetroArch does not have achievements that are similar to Steam games. These are separate altogether. You will need an account at retroachievements.org. I'm going to do a video on this one in the future, but if you already have one, just turn on the achievements, enter your account information, and you're good to go. Now from here, I was gonna say, hey, it's time to launch a game, but there's one more thing I forgot to do. So in the settings menu here, go to playlist, go to manage playlist, because we're gonna make things easier for every single game you launch. So if you take a look here, these are all the systems I entered games for. You can see a couple of games here that aren't of course in RetroArch. I'm gonna address that in a different video. Uh, but for the purposes of this video here, let's just click on Nintendo 64. So where it says default core NA, I'm just gonna hit enter and a bunch of cores pop up and I wanna select Nintendo 64 here. So every time I launch a Nintendo 64 game, it'll automatically select the right core and not give me a headache. And not gonna lie, this step is a little bit tedious, but feel free to do it for every single system you have games for here. And now for the moment you've been waiting for for probably quite a while, it's now time to launch a game. You can do this in one of two different ways. On the main menu, you can click load content, find the specific ROM, click load core and find the core you want to use it with, or you can do it the easy way. Go down to the games list here for the games that you imported, select a system you want to use, and then launch a game that way. If you hit enter on a game, there is one more option here where it says download thumbnails. You can click on that. It will download a thumbnail and throw it up in your menu. And then you can launch your game if you want. So for this video, let's just do GoldenEye 007. All I have to do is just hit run once I hit enter on the game and that will boot up the game. So here's GoldenEye 007 up and running. If you just want to play your game, you absolutely can. If you want to configure some more things, you can too. All you have to do is just press F1 on your keyboard. That brings up your quick menu. You have a bunch of different options here. If you want to configure graphics, maybe try to improve them, you can absolutely do that from here. All you have to do is just click options. The options here will vary based on the system you're emulating. Some systems might have more options. Some systems might have less. So we're N64 here, if you take a look, there are a ton of different things you can do. From a beginner level, I really don't recommend changing a whole lot here, but you can go to where it says Glide N64 and change your resolution. You can crank your resolution and make your game look beautiful. And then you can go down to native resolution factor and increase it even more to make your game look even better. But I will say the more you increase the resolution here, the harder it's gonna be on your computer. If your computer is struggling to emulate a game, just turn this down a little bit Turn down the resolution a little bit and it should work a lot better. And if you scroll down to the bottom here, you can do a couple more things without really mucking things up too much. Uh, if you go to texture filter, you can change it. You can smooth it out or sharpen it. And if you go to texture enhancement, you can really change how things look here. But aside from that, there isn't much else you really need to do. From this menu though, you can save your states, load your states. And if you're running into control issues, you can also fix those here. So just go down to controls and make sure everything is working exactly as you want. But aside from that, you're pretty much good to go. Enjoy RetroArch and enjoy your retro gaming. Anyways, that is all I've got for this video. You can do so much more with RetroArch. I do have some tutorials. I'll leave some in the description below and I'm gonna be doing more in the future. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Thank you everyone, take care.